earlier in the week, I made a video on some of the best TVs to purchase for next-gen consoles, Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5. Series S, you don't really need a crazy TV, but the Series X and PlayStation 5, you need to get 4K at 120 hertz. And because of that, you need an HDMI 2.1 input or a port. In that video, I said the LG NanoCell 85 series is a TV that I would highly recommend. It was the best buy out of all the TVs that I recommended. And I was, as I was creating the video and putting in the links for you guys to click on, I saw that the NanoCell 90 was actually cheaper than the 80. And I had a decision to make. Do I purchase this 90 and wait a few weeks to see what the prices are looking like for Black Friday and sit on it? Or do I skip out on this deal and miss out on it like I did with the X900 for the Sony. In the last video, I said that my favorite TV would be the Sony X900, not this LG. The X900 actually is $1,400 right now. A few weeks ago, it was $999. Hey, I'd like to take a brief pause in this video to talk about an issue that's recently developed. As I was editing this video, I realized that I recorded it last week. This issue has been developed over the last week or so as well. So throughout this video, I mentioned that I love the Sony X900 900. I love Sony in general and I would recommend the X900 if it goes on sale for $999. At this moment, I'd like to retract that statement and also retract that statement from my last video. The issue, I'm not going to go too into detail because I'd like to make a separate video on this, but the issue is a lot of people on 4K 120 are seeing a crazy blur issue that's occurring. Sony has said that this is just an update. So if it is just an update, then it'll be fixed maybe in future updates. But if this is something with their panel, something in their hardware, then an update would mean that they have to retract all the models, take everything back and come out with a new version. Sony is in a crazy mess right now. There's a petition you can sign for them to go back to their last update so that this issue doesn't occur. As of right now, if there was a TV that I would recommend, it would be the LG. In my last video, I said I've never owned an LG, never thought that I would own an LG, and here I am. I've used it for about a week now, and honestly, I'm loving it so far. If it wasn't for this blur issue with Sony, I would say that the best overall TV would be the Sony X900H, but I think for gamers, the LG might be a little bit better overall. So for now, my top recommendation, if you are getting an Xbox Series X, PlayStation 5, my top recommendation would be the LG NanoCell 90 for now. Back to the video. So here's my game plan. I'm going to hold on to this TV. I'm actually gonna unbox it here for you. And in the meantime, I'm gonna keep my eyes on the X900H. And if it goes down to 999, I will return this TV and get the Sony. So we'll see how it goes. For now, I'm gonna unbox this. Best Buy has it for 999. This has an awesome, awesome panel. It will do the 4K at 120. Currently, there's not a lot of games that have that kind of output, but as the year progresses, we will get more and more. This TV has gotten amazing reviews overall. The Sony does do better with movies and black levels, similar to an OLED TV. This TV right here does better with gaming, has um, better input lag, better latency overall. So let's unbox it. It's a really big TV. I'm gonna unbox it here. We'll go through everything. Uh, and I think the stand that I have behind me does not fit. This TV doesn't fit on it. So I have another stand I might have to bring over. So uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's do this. I might need scissors actually. Yeah, I'm gonna need scissors, hold on. No, actually, no, no, we're good, we're good. We're good. So the only annoying thing with this uh, whole process would be that if the Sony does go on sale, then I have to put everything back in the box and then take it back to Best Buy. And I have a sedan, you have a sedan. So we probably will have to get a U-Haul. This is the most annoying part of TVs. I used to work at HH Greg and we would have to basically unbox the TV like every few weeks whenever new ones would come out and then we'd have to put it up on the wall. So um, got the legs here, got the power cable here. The legs do sit pretty far wide. So um, got the manual here. And this is the most annoying part, taking the TV out uh, in a way where you're not grabbing the panel. I don't know if there's a good way to do this. I didn't learn a good way in my four years of selling TVs. So my way is to just put this down and put my feet on the box and pull it out. So you wanna help me? Uh, I think I need help, yeah. Um, 
Yeah, I'm, there's a way to do this where we don't have to put it down on the ground and pull it out. And I'm remembering now, it's been a few years since I've worked in, in selling TVs. Basically, you open up the top, take out the styrofoam, and you can just lift this, and then lift the other side right here, and basically lift this whole thing up over the TV. So let me do that. Okay, we pulled it out. As we were pulling it out, this came out of there. This is the magic wand, I think they call it. It's the wand, or basically the remote of the TV. It's pretty cool how it works. You can move your remote around and it'll be like a mouse on the TV. So just to go over some specs of this TV, four HDMI ports, two of them are HDMI 2.1. Again, we need that for the 4K at 120 Hertz. The only games on, on uh, release day that'll be 4K 120 are Call of Duty and a few others. One of them is Assassin's Creed. So as the year goes on, more games will be optimized fully for 4K 120, HDMI 2.1 port or input enables the 4K 120. So if you're looking for a TV, you can watch my last video on it. Uh, I've got other TVs suggested in there with all the links in them. So I'll also link this TV down below just because it's a crazy deal. 999 for this TV, usually it's 1599, 65 inch, 4K, upscales to 8K, 120 Hertz native, upscales to 240 Hertz. So it's not an OLED TV and it is not native 8K, it upscales to 8K. If you watched my last video, you know I'm not a huge fan of the upscaling feature. It should be native, it is what it is, but let's see how the upscaling goes. I got FIFA that I wanna play on here, which I'm really excited about. She wants to watch The Office on here, which you don't really need this kind of TV for The Office. The TV behind me is a 55 inch, 60 hertz, 4K TV by Hisense. I got it last year on Black Friday. There was a crazy deal going on for this for 200 bucks. I got it just because I needed a TV uh, right away. Not anything crazy. I'm gonna take this TV out. I've been playing FIFA on this all year and watching movies on this and the white levels suck. So I'm excited to put this up. Okay, so we just set up the TV legs or the stand. This stand behind me does not fit. Uh, the legs are way too far apart, way too wide, so it'll kind of fall off the TV stand here. So what we're gonna do is move this stand over, bring another stand, and put this TV on there and fire it up. In the box, again, there was the, uh, the Magic Remote, the Wand, LG's remote, and then they also had this. If you have a DVD player or an old VHS player, you might need this. I don't think a lot of people will. I'm surprised that it's still even in the box. And then the last thing that was in there, I personally don't know what this is. I'm gonna assume it's for like a cable, maybe cable management of some sort. I really don't know what this is. I don't wanna look through the manual. So if you know, maybe comment down below. I'm gonna assume it's some sort of cable hook. So we're gonna switch out the stand, put this TV on there, fire it up, see my initial reaction to the setup process and what the panel looks like and we'll go from there. So let me just do this real quick and I'll be right back. Okay, so we just set up the TV, powered it up. I see the red light for, um, for the power, put the batteries in the remote, ready to turn it on. Before I do, we did run into a little bit of a hiccup and unforeseen uh, spend that I might need to make. This stand, I assumed that it would fit a 65 inch. In my last video, I said I have a Vizio TV and I recommended them. I do have a 65 inch, but I, I didn't think about the fact that that stand was in the middle of the TV, not on the wide part. So this one, you probably are not able to see it so well, but the stand for the TV or the legs are coming off the stand a little bit for the, the TV stand. Uh, I'm confusing you a little bit. So the legs from the TV are coming off the TV stand a little bit. I'm a little worried that at any point this TV will fall on one side. So after this video, I'm gonna put it up on another uh, TV stand. It's not a TV stand, it's more of a table and then I'll get another TV stand later on. So let's just power it up and go through this setup and then I'll worry about this later on. So. I'm sure that the first few seconds, first few minutes of this are just set up. I might fast forward through this just because uh, it's set up, this is boring stuff. So let me set this up really quickly. So as this is loading, again, just to go over some of the specs, 4K 120 fully capable because it does have two HDMI ports and uh, it will be able to upscale to 8K. The HDMI 2.1 port allows 8K content, it transfers speeds up to 48 gigabytes per second. This TV's HDMI 2.1 port transfers up to 40 gigabytes per second, so not fully 8K capable, but I think it'll be able to do something. So this uh, magic wand 
feature is going to take a little while to get used to. I remember back in the day when we would play around with it, it was really sensitive and it's still pretty sensitive right now. Like I'm barely moving this and it's moving around. So it does take a little bit of time to get used to, but it's pretty cool. LG has an awesome WebOS system. That's what they're known for. But I think slowly they're trying to get away from that and move towards a, I think they're trying to move towards more of a best TV kind of a feel. Okay, so let me just set up the uh, ThinQ app. I don't really have other LG devices in my house, so I don't know if I honestly really need this, but let me just set it up anyway. Okay, so it's having me set up a bunch of different applications. I'm gonna have to log into everything, which is a little annoying, but I think with technology nowadays, it does make it easier. Amazon made it pretty easy. There's a quick code on the website that you can use, logs you into your account. If you haven't seen Borat, you should definitely watch it. It's really funny. So, I think everything is set up so far. Um, again, it does take a little bit of time to get used to the magic wand here. Um, let's go to YouTube. Let's see what there is on YouTube and see what it's looking like. So I do have an Alexa device and I'm gonna set it up with this TV. So there's an LG content button here. I'm assuming that's where you go to download more applications, but I'm thinking that's just a bunch of applications that are already downloaded, like Showtime Stars, I want YouTube. Okay, so it's not a place where the apps are already downloaded. It's a place where you can go to download apps. So I'm downloading YouTube right now. I'll have to download Netflix, Showtime, and log into everything. So I think this is just the, uh, the Best Buy HH Greg sales rep in me wanting to go straight to YouTube and go to a 4K video to watch some 4K content. Already some 4K content that we can click on to watch. Oops, clicked on the wrong one. Okay, so it's a bunch of little fishes swimming around. It looks really good, it does, but I don't think this is 4K. I, I wanna assume that this is 1080p. No, I'm wrong, it is 4K. Okay. So that's pretty cool. It's pretty damn clear. There's some things in there that do seem a little fuzzy to me, but I guess it's because it's a, an aquarium. I wanna check the 8K upscaling feature. I know there's an awesome video of 8K where there's a drone going over Manhattan, and I wanna look that up. Okay, so these words already are so crisp compared to my other TV. Wow. Wow, that's... That is amazing. The fact that TVs can even be this clear is crazy. I don't know if you're able to see it fully because there are some lights set up. Might be a little bit of a glare. What do you think? I can see everything. You can see the... You can literally see the people on the the bottom of the, on the road, literally on the street, you can see people walking. That's, that's crazy. So again, LG is an awesome TV, awesome panel. They don't do as well with black levels compared to other TVs like Sony. Samsung actually does the worst with black levels. Samsung makes their uh, panel really bright. So I'm gonna try to find a darker video on here and we can see what the black levels look like. So this is a video that's a little bit darker and I honestly am blown away by how amazing this looks. So I had to turn the volume down. I don't want to get any copyright infringements going here, but this is crazy. This is so good. I don't know how well the 8K upscaling feature works just yet at first glance, but so far, this is crazy. This is amazing. Like each color is really, really nice, vivid. The blacks, you could tell the difference between the different blacks. There's a, a Dolby HDR, Dolby Atmos in this TV as well. So far from what I hear on the sound, it's way better than the Hisense $200 TV that I had. Sounds like there's actually a sound bar in there. So if you 
see how thin these TVs have gotten over the last few years, it's kind of hard to put a really good sound system in there just because the thin bezels on the TV don't allow for, for thick speakers. These TVs don't have amazing bass. For some reason, this TV does have amazing bass. So I'm gonna put on something that's no copyright. All right, so let's hear what it sounds like. That's on 20. I want to get to the bass. Okay, waiting for the bass drop. That's not bad. That's pretty good. Okay, hear me out on this. I don't know about the song, I'm not a fan of the song, but that bass drop, honestly, like there's bass in that. I don't know how they're able to put bass in, the, in such a thin bezel, but I'm honestly surprised. I did not expect the bass to be that nice. Keep in mind, a sound bar will make the movie experience way better. I do have a sound bar here, but on the TV alone, if you don't get a sound bar, that's pretty good, I think, right? Do, do you disagree? Are you saying that to agree with me? No. It, it sounds good. The last thing that I want to check is FIFA. Obviously, the video game experience is very important. So let me fire up FIFA. Let's see how that looks. So the Ultra HD Deep Color is being turned on while playing this game. The setting popped up on its own. That's pretty cool. Um, while we're waiting for this game to load, I have to admit that I do have an issue when it comes to FIFA and 2K. First of all, I do have an issue in the fact that I play these games way too much and I get yelled at for playing them too much. But the second part, the second part of that is that I get banned from video games quite often because nobody knows who I am. Nobody knows who the person is messaging and I think I use that to my advantage and I talk a lot of smack. If I win, I message the person, I talk smack. If I lose, I message the person, I talk smack. Either way, I'm talking smack. And sometimes I say mean things to people. And if I was in person, I probably wouldn't say these things. But because they don't know me, because they will never find me, I can say them. I had somebody a few weeks ago ended up living in the same area that I live in and actually wanted to meet up and, and fight. Uh, the, remember the car guy? I showed you the thing, he was, yeah. So as I launched the game, I got automatically, the Xbox pulled this up, allow auto latency, Dolby Vision, and variable refresh rate. So I'm gonna keep these new settings. Automatically came up, I didn't have to do anything, that's really cool. Okay, so as I'm going through this menu, I do notice that everything is a little fuzzy. I don't know if it's because of the settings that I just enabled on the Xbox, or if maybe this game isn't, 4K 120. I don't. I don't think it is. I actually. Actually, it's not. It's not 4K 120. Uh, if you play FIFA and you play as Liverpool or Barcelona or Bayern, I don't have any respect for you. I guess me playing as Real Madrid is also kind of a cheat code. But who do they have other than the cover athlete? They don't have Ronaldo. They don't have Messi. Okay. I don't know if it's because of how close I'm sitting to the TV. And that's why maybe it looks a little fuzzy, but let's see, it, it, Okay, okay, this is, this is pretty cool. Honestly, this is a big upgrade compared to the Hisense. That's a $200 TV compared to this, which is a thousand, usually a $1,500 TV. Um, so, I don't know, I, I like it so far. I think I'd have to sit a, a little bit further away from it to fully experience what it's like. 
Okay, it's taking me way too long to score a goal here. I'm just gonna say that it's on legendary setting for the computer, but honestly, not bad. Like this is, this is way better overall than, than the $200 TV that I had. So I guess maybe comparison for me is not fair because I'm coming from a TV that's not that great. That TV was awesome, I loved it. Um, this TV so far is doing so much better with color, with white levels. Uh, I'm able to see more. It is hurting my eyes a little bit to sit this far up because it's such a big screen, so I do need to sit a little bit further back. But overall, this is pretty good. Now, it will take me a week or two to, to use this TV constantly to see what I think of it. But as of right now, I don't think I would switch to the Sony. I think that it's way too much work to put this TV away. So maybe Best Buy's marketing got me. They wanted somebody to purchase the TV, not wait till Black Friday. And that's exactly what happened to me, even though I was waiting for Black Friday. So the next gen consoles come out in about two weeks now. I will be getting an Xbox Series X to plug up to this TV. Going to get Call of Duty so I can see what 4K 120 looks like. I'm gonna assume that this is 1080p at 120 hertz. I don't think this is 4K 120. If it is 4K, it's upscaling just because FIFA is not optimized at that level. It does look really good, but I think FIFA 21 on an Xbox will look insane. So I can't wait for the next gen console. Hopefully this gives you a little bit of insight on what these TVs are capable of. I'm still yet to discover everything on this TV. I have to switch the TV stand because I'm still a little nervous on it. But yeah, this was the first unboxing on my channel and I think it went pretty well. Um, let me know what you think of the TV so far. Let me know if there's any settings that you think that I should play around with or if you think that I should switch this one out for the Sony because that's still something that's on my mind. Thank you for watching this video. If you haven't seen my video on some of the best TVs to purchase, for the next gen consoles. Check out my last video on the channel. You'll get a good amount of insight. This TV actually wasn't even on that list. It came on sale a day after I posted it. So check out that video if you wanna see some other TVs, some other good deals. Hopefully you purchase one as well and can see 4K 120 because this is a crazy new level of gaming. Let me know what you think about this TV and on to the next video.